hey, when a sketchy pizzeria with like a history of, of murder comes into town and offers you a job, you say no. You say, no thanks, hard pass, get out of here. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live. Your We're mic immediately went. I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Look, sorry. I know it's not your fault. It's not my fault. I know it's not I your fault. I did the same gesture I do every time. I know. A solid, swift gesture to the audience, beckoning them forward, welcoming them into my home, <laughs> welcoming them into my attic. I know. I didn't observe anything different, but what I heard was just a symphony of like glogging. Why do I have to be the one? to bear the burden of fixing that though. I, I, do you want me to go up there? This microphone is, no, I'm saying, I'm saying that someone is not pulling their weight around here and it's this microphone. Okay, I can get behind that. Right? This dude drops his freaking puff all the dang time. All the dang time, I know. Ash. I know. God, unacceptable. And it ruined my life too, cause I was like, guys, Huge news, massive news in 2023, here the year of FNAF, yet again, Five Nights at Freddy's has truly broken the internet, releasing like an hour ago, two hours ago, based on uh, the live feedback here, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, PSVR 2, Help Wanted 2, Game Parade trailer 1.5. I don't know. There is new news to be had in the world of Five Nights at Freddy's. The VR game is coming out, and soon, you can tell it's coming out soon because uh, they've dropped the trailer and usually that's starting the like hype train towards the final push here. I have not seen this. I just came in from a meeting, sat down on the couch and Ash is like, OMG, get ready for a wild ride. Yeah. That's and I am exactly ready for that ride, Ash. Are you? I, yes. I, here's the thing. I don't know if you are. Uh, when have I never been ready for a ride, Ash? <laughs> that's I'm, true. I am always down to ride. I, yeah. DTR, as they say. Down to ride. Down to ride? That's me. Is that what that means? That is what DTR stands for. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm so glad you originated that. Not to be confused with DVR or right. GTFO. Different. I don't think GTFO was anywhere in the equation. Uh, we're talking acronyms. Okay. Scuba. scuba. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Relevant. Because I'm going to scuba down into that lore. Yeah, you sure are, man. Laser. L light accelerated. No, I forgot what laser is. I always forget what laser stands for. Forgive me. <laughs> okay. Emissions, radi emission radiation. Self, no. Ah. Remind me down in the comments below what laser stands for. Speaking of uh, Ash's amazing linguistic abilities, before we get to this Fr Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 PSVR 2 gameplay trailer that I'm very excited to react, it is a minute and a half, guys. So we can't waste too much time. Otherwise, we will be here for the next week and a half. And it is Thanksgiving later this week. So real quick, uh, Ash, give us an update on your novella. All right, y'all. So um, by the time we're recording this, I have passed mm -hmm. the 30,000 word mark. That's impressive. I thank you. That's huge. You are, you are like there. Thanks, Cut, man. Right, because the goal's 50? Yes. <sighs> How's it feel? Oh, weird. Yeah. It's like, this is one of the largest Word documents I've ever created. <sighs> How many pages is that 30,000 words? Oh. Um, I think we're nearing like 60 pages. Oh, buddy. Yeah, dude. That is up there with the FNAF timeline episodes. <laughs> right? It feels like it at least. So, hey, I'm sure you could write mm -hmm. like a FNAF script as part of NaNoWriMo, you know? Well, I'm sure you could. And just like make a 50,000 word script yep. in a month. Have have your little checklist of the must haves. Yeah. I always come back. Oh, got that one. Yep. Oh, the pieces are in place for you. Well, yep. I'll put you back together. Got yep. that. Check it. That's already a page. Especially with how scripts go where there's like massive spaces between scripts. I hate that. I'll, if anyone has ever seen the way that we write our scripts, they're literally just like essays. Like literally just big old chunks of text. And when people come in to try and like write for us or offer up scripts or whatever we're like nope and they then they send it to you in like script form where if you've ever seen script form it's like matt pat vo one line huge space stage direction huge space matt pat vo other line it's like no 
have like a 300 page script at that point. I was genuinely shocked to find out that y'all didn't do it like a screenplay. Oh, it drives me nuts. I hate screenplay format. It drives me wow, nuts. Wow, dude. I hate it. To your, to your novel. Yes. Um, so yeah, we've hit the 30,000 word mark. This thing is changing and it's growing and I feel like we're we're getting to the point. We're rising. The action is rising. Okay, it's we're in rising great. action. Oh yeah. Oh man, that hero's journey do be coming. Oh, it's oh it's coming. Is it going to is it is is that hero's journey going to conclude at 50,000 words? It might go over. Wow. Right? Nice. Let the story breathe. Exactly. Let it be however many words it needs to be. Exactly. What is that story about, Ash? <laughs> Good try. No. Here's your Ash book clue of the day. Yes. And that clue is hiatus. Ash is taking a break from here on out. <laughs> no. <clears throat> when this book comes out, Ash is taking a hiatus from the channels. Yeah. They're just gone. Yeah. Like doing your book tour. Unexplained break. Yeah. Mysterious hiatus. Yeah. All right. And there you go. Well, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, in the comments below, please solve this. <laughs> Because I have to dedicate my brain space for the next 90 minutes to figuring out uh, the entire plot of Five Minutes at Freddy's Help Wanted 2 PSVR 2 gameplay trailer. Yeah. Are we ready for this? I hear I'm not ready for this ride. I really don't think you are. I think I am. I, mm, I've been around this block a couple times, mm, Ash. This block and I, very familiar with each other. Okay. Old besties. Old besties. Old besties. You and the block? Me and the block. Wow. You might as well call me Matt Pat from the block. Me and Jenny. <laughs> Hanging out at the block. No GPS needed. No, G no. <laughs> I know this route. Like the I'm not plugging that into Google Maps. I've been down this road. I've trod those boards. <laughs> what? That's a, it's a stage thing. Don't worry about it. Okay. I feel like I also came into the studio today with mild violence in my heart. You kind of did. Based on based on how today has gone and based on how the like beginning of this video has gone, mild violence. Call me middle name. Matt Pat Mild Violence <laughs> Pat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Five Nights at Freddy's, help wanted. Uh, so again, as we get started here, it's important to remember the context of Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted VR, the first game, probably to this day, top two Five Nights at Freddy's games. I love that game. I think it's like the quintessential experience. It's the best parts of the first four games, plus so many other things. And it's far and away the scariest one because you're literally in a VR headset and you can't escape. Um, so I am very excited about what this game promises, or at least, you know, the, the legacy that it's following up on. I think the, the Five Nights at Freddy's games themselves, Hit or miss based on quality, you know, I've always enjoyed them for the lore and the dissection and this and that. But when it comes to the gameplay experience, you got a pretty broad range of like, wow, that was really fun to play and cool and interesting versus like, ooh, that was a slog. Um, and so this one I have high hopes for. So I'm very cautiously optimistic about this. So with mild violence in our hearts at a T rating, let's roll forward, shall we? Time to clock in. The first day at a new job can be daunting. And so already we're riffing on uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 6. That's important, I feel like. That seems that seems like a, a valid thing to point out here. Uh, where, you know, these cutouts and this art style was very much of the style of Pizzeria Simulator. So that might already be putting us in a time and place for where this fits into the timeline. Um, we also talked a lot about how in the previous, like, reveal trailers for this, there was a lot of sister location imagery, um, so that might also play into this in some capacity. Um, but again, getting a sense of where we are in the like linguistics, the visual language of this world. Anxiety inducing and downright terrifying. Fazbear Entertainment is different. We so so these are like okay, so these are actual literal things pulled from that game at a new job can be daunting, anxiety inducing, and downright terrifying. Purple. Fazbear uh, Lobotomy, You Barely Know Me, that's from uh, the Insanity ending, which is the one that you get from Egg Baby um, in FNAF 6. So again, really riffing on the FNAF 6 stuff. Fazbear and these are legitimately just pulled from it. We are invested in you. At Thank a Fazbear you. location, you are given the opportunity. Okay. Got some Fazer Blast. It's interesting that's like an older style Fazer Blast, right? So in Security Breach, that's the first time that we ever heard of a mini game or like a part of the 
Five Nights at Freddy's World called Phaser Blast, and it was the laser tag section. So it's interesting that there's like what looks to be an old carnival game th with this kind of styling, right? Of Phaser Blast, and like in the booth setup, and it looks like one of those uh, things that you find in amusement parks where you hit the like X's or the little targets and, and small little activities happen. Like the bird pops up or a spider jumps out or like a guy jumps away because he shot him in the butt. And so it's interesting that we're taking this from what looks to be the FNAF 1 location or at least like a version of the FNAF 1 location. Um, so is, did, so is this the original version of Phaser Blast? Is this an earlier version of Phaser Blast that then became Security Breach? Or is this inspired by something that became Security Breach? The name Phaser Blast feels important to me, and it, I think it tells somewhat of a timeline here. You are given the opportunity to find your lane. Oh, we got more Foxy Pirate At stuff. Location, you are given the opportunity to find so we got, I, I, you know, I, you love me some pirate, some, some pirate booty. Um, it looks like we're revisiting kind of like the, the Captain Foxy game, which was one of the, the best mini games uh, from Help Wanted. So I'm excited to go on that one again. That one was incredibly difficult and also filled with a lot of secrets based on the scores that you were getting and what secret targets you were hitting in the world around you. So I would expect that one to be just replete with all sorts of uh, fun little, whore, little, whore, little lore Easter eggs to find. What interests you? Customer service? Okay. Technical support? Safety and security? Oh, oh no! Game testing? Perhaps test driving one of our ride attractions. Okay, so we're starting to go off the rails here. So before we go off the rails, let's let's pick this apart, shall we? What I, you, can, you can tell that the music's faded away and they're getting ready to ramp up into something spooky. So before we get to that, so it looks like this is going to be a similar to like a Happy Meat Farm, um, or not Happy Meat Farm, uh, the, the burger restaurant game, where it's, it's a, hey, serve up the appropriate order, and it probably like... Picks up speed or goes faster and faster. Look at look at this delicious lineup, though. Ash, doesn't this make your tummy grumble? And so you got your your nachos, your corn, your rice and beans. Okay, I was You're gonna so, be making tacos. I was hyper focusing on the discoloration of the of the corn spots. Oh, it is putrid. Um, <laughs> it, it is. Uh, I mean, I was not open to looking at the context clues because how distracting that was. No, like as I I go to Moe's Southwest Grill not infrequently because it's one of Ollie's favorite uh, restaurants and I also enjoy it. But this is the sort of thing. This this is how it feels and looks when you go to Moe's Southwest Grill like at ten fifty five right before it closes. Oh wow. Yeah. It's, Y'all are hitting those last minute. Last, you got to get those last minute quesadillas. Bottom, bottom of the barrel. They are scraping. Oh yeah. That queso dish. <laughs> They're just scraping that queso. It's had some time to harden. It's a little mm, texture. Little congeal. Yeah, it gives you a little crunch at the bottom. You're like, oh, mm. didn't expect, didn't expect my smooth queso to be crispy. Love a little surprise. Yeah. <laughs> never, you never can tell. <laughs> those beans or something else. Here we go. For service. And you got a time limit. Uh, anything else there? That's. Seems like it'll be fairly simple. I am intrigued by, it looks like the Roxy Raceway kind of, oh no, that's um, the start of Coco. I don't know what they're called, but where they cut out the, and th maybe this is in uh, Security Breach, I just forget seeing them, but where they cut out the little scenes in the paper uh, and then hang them up, usually around like Dia de los Muertos. Technical support. This looks like fun. This seems up my alley. Follow the instructions, repair, repair the stuff. Love that. Love that for us. Safety and security. I don't know what's going on with Helpy here, though, bud. This this is where things get real unhinged. Security. I am very concerned about Helpy getting himself some, uh, some gas. <laughs> Helpy is getting put under the gas, and I am very concerned about that. He is strapped down and not enjoying the t his time. I wonder why his left leg is highlighted. Uh, I'm assuming that we're repairing individual body parts. Oh, Potentially, no. are we putting him to sleep? To or maybe it? we're putting him back together. Yeah, oh, no. anesthetizing him. Mm. <clears throat> I didn't, you know, who knew that animatronics needed to be like put out before you tear them apart and put them back together? But it seems like that's going to be the case there, because you can see the different body parts. Oops, because you can see the other body parts up there. Safety and security. Like you can see what looks to be. Maybe not actually. What is that? Looks like a. Huh. Gun. It looks like a, a gun. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Like maybe like a soldering gun or something. Oh no, this is the mask. Right? This looks like may, might be the mask. 
And then I don't know what this, this part of the gun is. Huh. Memory, testing. easy. Who are we playing with here? Uh, an animatronic in a VR headset jacked into the system. That's interesting. So we have an endoskeleton jacked into the system. So one of the things that we talked about when we were playing through FNAF VR, right, is in the books and in our theories and in Ruin, it seems pretty solidly confirmed at this point that there is an AI system that is managing or in charge of the functioning of the Pizzaplex, right? Um, it is one of those things that the book talks about it in a couple different ways. Probably the most easy to understand way is the giant baobab tree. And it's this big tree in the middle and it's got all these wires that come out and those wires are run by the Mimic AI program and it affects all the different animatronics, including the core animatronics that operate at the pizzeria. And the way that this seems to be visualized, and we called this out during our Ruin playthrough, the way this seems to be visualized in uh, Ruin is you see the, per the, the pink or purple uh, circulating code around the different animatronics, right? And so when they are jacked into the AI system, when they are jacked into the network that is the uh, Pizzaplex, they have that code circulating around them. They're, they are that color, right? But when they are disconnected, that's when they become invisible when you have the mask on because they're no longer surrounded by the code. They're no longer jacked into the AI network. And so I'm wondering if this is a training program or a training module in some way that is jacking the mimic program or this code or this sequence of events or whatever into the animatronic's brain so that way they then become part of this like hive mind that is the mimic system that that controls and operates the whole pizzaplex um i think that's that's pretty interesting it would explain how this one piece of code is able to be in so many different places at once uh also interesting that this is happening in what looks to be the daycare system uh so we're playing little daycare games uh in the in the all-star daycare perhaps test driving this is reminiscent to either the phaser blast game or the uh foxy uh, pirate mini game one of our ride attractions Maybe you are more suited to glamour and fashion with service to the stars. Oh, that's fun. This this looks like a new version of the uh, Fix Em Up minigame. The the kind of like uh, repair minigame where the last game, it was kind of like Simon Says, where it's like, make them beautiful by, or make them, you know, take off his right eye, replace his left ear, blah, 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 tune his guitar. So this, this actually looks like a lot of fun. Uh, the texture on Roxy is weird. Um... I don't know if that's because this is, I, I, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe that we're just seeing it from a different angle or we're seeing it more close up than we normally would. Um, but it is odd how patched together she is in a way that I wouldn't expect. It, it, it feels very intentionally done. Like why wouldn't she be symmetric and stuff? It's, it's odd. Maybe you what do we got here? You got the different colors. So this is to remove the paint. Uh, this is the, you know, a sun and moon, eclipse. This looks to be, what, cupcake? No. Freddy? Freddy. Chica. No, that's Chica. I Roxy. Monty. Freddy. Who's this? You know in your soul of souls who that is. Who's that? Look at that bar on the top. Who's that? <laughs> Come on now. Who's that? I can't say it. It has to be you. No. No. No? You can do it. No, it can't be me. Are I you can't do it. Are you telling me that in this foundation palette, in this foundation palette in Help Wanted 2, there is Music Man! Is that a Music Man? Yeah. It does look like a Music Man, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Music Man gets his own color palette. Purple, hot yellow, and brown. Great. Hot yellow. Hot yellow. <laughs> the, ch the color of hot cheese. Hot yellow. <laughs> Hot, steamy yellow. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't like that. Like that end of day queso, you know? <laughs> Hot, crispy, steamy yellow. End of day queso at Moe's Southwest Grill. There it is. Glamour and fashion. Fun. That looks like a lot of fun. Look, look, Five Nights at Freddy's got the style theory treatment, uh, which I appreciate. Oh, you get to make your own paper plate, pal. That's really fun. I like that. Try a little of everything and find... Hold up. I want to see what this is. 
Oh, just done. Okay, so everything has an egg timer, which is interesting. I got the done. So there is going to be a time pressure on all this. Like, hey, finish your paper plate, pal, before this, guy's this guy attacks you. Also, our guy definitely needs some dental work. Whack a Bonnie. We we've seen this one in past ones. You. Whatever it may be, there's only one way to find out. Okay, we'll, we'll rewind back through this one. I'm getting the vibe now. Oh, hey, bud. Oh, there's my boy! Ooh, hello. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, there's a lot of Music Man representation, and I love, I love that! Give me more Music Man! Oh, he is the star of this show! Music star! Not Music Man. Now accepting applications. When's it come out? Give me a date. Give me a date. Oh, hello. Oh, ooh. That claw would hurt. December. Oh. I mean, I figured. Last day of the year. Awesome. That looks great. I'm so excited about this game, Ash. Yeah, man. I am so excited about this game. Already. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll work our way through the back half of this. But already it feels like the variety of minigames uh, is a lot more robust this time. Uh, last time... You know, a huge bulk of the game was spent recreating or reliving FNAF 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, which was cool, and I, and I like that, and I appreciated being able to re-experience those games in a completely new context and with a completely new layout. Um, so I did like that a lot. However, to me, the strongest moments of Help Wanted 1 were those alternate minigames, the, the vent repair, the uh, parts and services, the, uh, the ones where you're having to, go, you know, pizza party, the ones where they're specifically designed with the VR experience in mind. And so it's exciting to see that we're leaning into more of that with this game and that we are getting to experience like things that are specifically oriented around this being a VR experience. So that's, I, I'm very hyped about that. So this guy, we're popping some balloons. I'm not seeing anything particularly noteworthy there. I, I am concerned about Helpy being rabid. <laughs> rabid Helpy is a mood, and I don't know if I'm prepared to deal with that mood. He's losing a little foot. Right? His, his foot is gone. He lost his toesies. He's rabid. We also have a, 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 a bunch of candy down here. Is that a trick-or-treat bucket of cupcakes? That is, a tr that is a cupcake treat bucket. So I'm wondering, is this a world? So first off, we need to... S Sever his foot with our with our blade, um, if you can see that, because I know I'm covering it up. Here. Ooh. Thank you. Um, so that's concerning. I like that he's contained in a vice here. I also think that he'll, I like angry Helpy over in the corner, poor guy. Uh, what is this? Flexible 24T by 12 inches. 24T by 12 inches. Carbon steel. Is, is this like our tool? Is that a tool that we're using? What is that? Oh, it, oh, it's like pincers or something that we have here. Pliers? Or maybe it's like a measuring tool or something? Maybe it's going to cut off his leg? I don't know. Pickle popcorn. Sounds delicious. Dill pickle popcorn. Up in the upper right-hand corner. Sounds great. State oh, oh, is this a saw? It's a see-through saw? Oh, that's what it is. It's a see-through saw. Weird. Huh. Almost like a chainsaw or something, but like a manual saw, but you can see through it. Interesting. Oh, I get why. Because it probably for VR, you have to like aim it. And so if it was a physical saw, you don't have that like perspective to like look over it or whatever. And it blocks too much of your vision. So I'm wondering if it has to be see through. So that way it, it helps you with like the VR gameplay. Ripped up Chica, man. They're, they're going through some stuff. Is, is it popcorn? Pickled popcorn right up here. This? In, in, in Helpy's mouth. Oh, it could be popcorn. So yeah, I, my, my camera in the upper right-hand corner is blocking this bubby, but it says pickle popcorn. So yeah, maybe it is. That's what it is. It right. is popcorn. That has to be. That cannot be, that cannot be foam. I mean, also, it, how would that work? How would that work? I mean, it's Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't question anything. I, I mean, I question everything. <laughs> to be fair, I question everything about this franchise. But the moment that you introduce sea bonnies, into my vocabulary, I stop questioning reality. I'm like, all right, see Bonnie's around the table. If Helpy starts salivating, I'm leaving this room. <laughs> You're leaving the state.
<laughs> Ash is gone at that point. The second Helpy starts salivating, Ash quits. I'm retreating to like Montana. Yeah, I think that's fair. You will never see me again. <laughs> I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, man. Yeah, so let's hope that's popcorn. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be doing some very lonely live streams. Aww. Maybe. Okay. So we got some circuit breakers going on here. We've got Sun and Moon looking super great. This, this is one of those where it's like, oh boy, this, this is going to be, I see this mini game and I'm like, oh, this is going to be one of those that just like terrifies you the entire time. This looks so scary. Just watching this guy. Look at how scary, he's even scarier in this design than he is in, in the main games in Ruin and stuff. This is, this is horrific. I hate that. I hate that. There's only so one way to find out. So you have to you have to flat shine your flashlight at him for a certain amount of time before he, he dashes away. Uh, this what's this look like? To you? find out. Not 100 percent sure. One out of three. Maybe this is another like blaster mini game. So we are in another situation here where we're doing a, a traditional FNAF layout, which is interesting. Um, I was wondering as I was talking about before, right? I was wondering. Now that we've done FNAFs 1 through 4, there isn't really, like, what do you do? Like, FNAF Sister Location was already in that kind of, like, first-person perspective, and you were going through, like, vents and things like that, where it, f even though it, it was VR similar, it was VR adjacent, um, so it, but it didn't feel like it would be a fundamentally different game if it was in VR. It would just be spookier and more claustrophobic. So it's interesting to see us getting to do a, hey, here's a traditional game with cameras that were monitoring and doors that were shutting. Uh, I'm noticing the checkerboard floor, which implies that we're in a pizzeria and that we're in, in a pizza restaurant of some form. But you'll also notice that we're surrounded and oh, there's the checkerboard floor there that we can see. So is that sister location? That pipe? I'm trying to, I, I feel like I remember seeing a room that looked somewhat like this or something that looked somewhat like this during uh, the, the, like, custom nights of Sister Location. I could be wrong, though. But I feel like I remember seeing, like, Electro Babs or some, oh, or some crazy animatronic character, like, in this area. Um, but the thing I want to call out, especially, is the fact that we're dealing with two long hallways here and a, and a vent in the middle. So two long hallways always makes me think of the FNAF 4 layout. Um because that is how the FNAF 4 layout was with two long hallways and a connecting room back here. But this time there's a vent, which could be the closet. Um, because in the... Why, where would this be, though? <sighs> okay, so a couple things here. Obviously, this is a pizzeria. The FNAF 4 location is not a pizzeria. However, comma... The most recent FNAF book, uh, the Tales from the Pizza, the Last Tales of the Pizzaplex, has this story in there called Didophobia. It is probably one of the we haven't talked about it on the channels yet. It is probably one of the most talked about outside of the books that's happened recently. Basically, it's like, hey, here's FNAF Four. It is literally like, hey, I wake up and I'm haunted by nightmares of the animatronics starting at a certain hour of the day and. It very explicitly lays out the location that he's in. There's a closet in front of me. I open it up. There's a, you know, there's a hooked claw coming out. Oh, no, it's Foxy. I open up this door, and I see a, a chicken. I open up this door, and I see a, a bunny rabbit. And there's two hallways, and pa 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 And it is so expl down to, like, the quilt on the bed, right? So it is, Didophobia is, is one of those stories, similar to GGY, where it is the books very blatantly saying, like, we are a parallel to this thing from the games. And in this case, it's a very strong parallel to FNAF 4. Um, and what's revealed, right, is that at a certain point, the, the gas, uh, oh, sorry. What's revealed is that all of the nightmares and all of these attacks that the boy in the story, Rory, his name is, that Rory's having are hallucinations uh, as the result of hallucinogenic gas that is being pumped into his room. Uh, and he, he entered into this like experiment back when he was, I believe the age is, is seven. And now he's, it's been 10 years and now he's 17. Um, and the only reason he escapes them and the only reason he knows 
that he is in this experiment is that the the pump, the pump that's pumping this gas through the building, uh, short circuit. Short circuits or like the, the electrical connection is loose. It's unclear whether or not this is intentional or not, but basically the, the, the electrical plug is loose, the pump stopped work, working, and then all of a sudden he's not breathing in the gas anymore and he's able to see the world for what it really is. And what it really is, is a series, a series of hallways, just like this, a, a layout almost exactly like this. I have to double check if there are offshoot rooms as well with the Cam 3 and Cam uh, whatever this one is. Uh, cam 2, maybe. Uh, but it, it's, a, it, it's the exact same location as the FNAF 4 house, except it is derelict. And it also directly connects with a uh, sister location. So back here is the kitchen, I believe, based on the way they describe the layout in, in the book. And there's a refrigerator that dispenses him food at certain intervals. And once he like takes out the like trays of food in the refrigerator, he's able to climb through and he's like, oh no, now I'm in a place that is very similar to sister location. And so it shows you this connection between FNAF 4 and sister location in a very intimate way. And so I look here at a layout that is very similar to FNAF 4. And I look here and I see all these pipes along the wall that are probably pumping in some sort of hallucinogenic gas or something like that. And it makes me think of that story um, and that we might be getting some version of that. Uh, like I said, there is no vent in there, but also this vent is where Foxy would be, right? If, if there was like a, a direct pathway to the uh, closet that Foxy appears in in FNAF 4. Um, so very, very interesting. I feel like it is, the, this hallucinogenic gas idea um, is interesting for a lot of reasons. One, it feels like a more modern retelling of the, the sound disc, the sound illusion discs. It's, it's basically like a more publicly accepted version of the sound illusion disc. I think maybe Scott saw the fan response of like, sound illusion discs are silly and dumb. And so he's like, okay, everyone's okay with hallucinogenic gases. That's worked for Batman for a long time, so here you go. But it also calls to mind, and, and we haven't done a theory about this, but I'm thinking it over in real time. F Sister location was teased with the gas leak. Um, so what would it be, FNAF? That was the worst sound ever, <laughs> FNAF 4, gas, or no, that was Sister location, sorry. Sister location, I think, was teased with gas leak. Canceled due to gas leak was, I believe, the... Yeah, here we go. I remember when this one came out, and it was a, a big deal. Can I, can I see this full screen? Open a new window, there we go. Nope, all right, just... Can just, you open image yeah. in yeah, your tab? I could, or we could just do it here. Okay. I'm like, I can just find it. Okay, but this was, <coughs> excuse me, canceled due to leaks, right? So uh, originally when this teaser came out, everyone was like, oh no, sister location's done because there were leaks, and then you brightened it up, and. In other news, the grand opening of Circus Baby's Pizza World has apparently been canceled due to reported gas leaks in the building. Sources close to the establishment questioned the report, saying that strange activity around the area's night suggests that something else is to blame. One local is quoted as saying, everything just stopped. There was so much excitement around this thing, and then it, so, ba ba ba, tenant across the street claims to have witnessed large volume of cars surrounding the building, where they're coming and going with these animatronics, presumably. But, you know, at the time, and I think we were all correct to read this and, and assess this as, oh, this is a fake excuse, right? Like, uh-oh, something bad happened. And I believe, you know, back then we were like, oh, the gas leak was probably like baby, you know, ripping open and, and eating Elizabeth, basically. And it's like, oh, no, we got to shut down the pizzeria, this and that. But that was, you know, back then. Nowadays, if there is a world where it is legitimately gas leaks, like maybe it isn't being so so tongue in cheek with it. You know, maybe this isn't some quote unquote gas leaks that canceled sister location. Maybe it is actual gas that is leaking in the building, and and it is literally that way, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. So anyway, all of that is to say this. Screenshot reminds me very strongly of Didophobia, which itself is very clearly like in the, is trying to tell us stuff about FNAF 4, or at least what the new version and the new story around FNAF 4 is, which is funny. This is what we got here. Is that just a random endoskeleton? Is that Mimic? Who are we going with here? So this is the memory game. 
So it's interesting. So we have to play... That's funny. So we have to play the memory game, the concentration matching card game, while also scaring away animatronics that are fighting us, which is pretty terrifying and just sounds awful. Um, but again, leans into what worked so well about the first game, which is, oh yeah, just play a vent repair game while Mangle is chasing you down in this confined area. Or like, oh yeah, play, you know, a uh, the, the, the casual like repair mini game while scary things are happening in the world around you. So it looks like this is one of those where as you play the game, they're going to sneak up on us and we have to scare them away with flashes. Um, is that the mimic? No, I don't think so. It is interesting, though, that his... No, they're about... To, eh, their eye shape feels a little bit different, but that could just be... It's nice to see the Faz cam. We see Ballora showing up, doing her weird Ballora stuff, because Ballora's part of this franchise! And we know nothing of what to do with her. She's just kicking around. Look at, look at that, look at that. Her form is impeccable. Right? Look at that, look at that Ronde de, Ron de Jean. Ooh. Doing, this, doing some classic pirouettes. Some Shanae turns. Alright, that was picking up the gun. We're gonna shoot, shoot some Funtime Freddy. I like that. I like the ability to shoot Funtime Freddy. That sounds good. Once again, uh, interesting to, to throw out the fact that we are seeing a lot of sister location here. So, if this is somehow related to maybe a possible connection with FNAF 4 and Sister Location, the first teaser had us going down into the basement through the elevator. So it does seem like there might be a fair bit of Sister Location kind of references here, um, which would be great because that also helps us put it into some semblance of a timeline. Uh, I want to call out the angle where we are very clearly small and looking up at him. So that either indicates, you know... To me, that indicates, oh, are we a kid experiencing these night terrors, experiencing these, uh, this, this scary situation, and I, you know, these are my nightmares. Again, bringing up the idea of, like, how, cl how connected are we to FNAF 4 now? We're showing, again, FNAF 5, FNAF 4 connected in some way, uh, both physically based on their map, but also it seems like their stories might be more and more connected, which is cool. And then, and then of course, you have Music Man. Because every game is made better with Music Man. Music Man is like the Helpy, is like the modern version of Helpy. Like when Helpy first premiered on the scene, everyone's like, I like the design of that guy. He should show up more. And then he showed up and everything. I feel like that's going to become Music Man. Yeah. Music Man! He's just here. He doesn't. And, and what's great about him is, like, does he have lore importance? Does he? Not really. He's just here, living his best life. Well, maybe this is the game where we find out his importance to the lore. Hopefully. You know what? I like him just being this neutral entity that exists. He doesn't need lore. He just, he just exists and delivers music to the delight of all of our hearts and minds. And sometimes that's enough. And that is enough. Yeah. Being a little weird spider creature using that every time. So what do we got here? We got Dreadbear. Oh, interesting. So this is... Uh, this is the Fall Festival. So for those of you who don't remember, uh, in FNAF VR, the first game, Help Wanted, it was all set, or at least the Halloween update was set with, uh, the, the, the Curse of Dreadbear DLC was set as part of Fall Fest 1983. Uh, and so all of a sudden you were dropped into this kind of like fall festival with pumpkins and gourds and hay mazes and this and that. And that's where he first ex experienced Dreadbear. That's where he first encountered Dreadbear. T-posing Dreadbear back here, by the way. I feel dominated by this guy. Do you feel dominated by me? Yes, I do, Dreadbear. Um, and it seems like we're continuing that theme here of, hey, here is still that same fall fest. We got the pumpkins. We've got kind of that same, uh, got the same kind of like marshy or kind of foggy exterior here. Love the fact that uh, Trash and the gang are represented. And we just got a blaster in the face. Yeah! Get out of here, baby blush! She's just gone. This is very much uh, another parts and services, it feels like. Right? right? I love that his nose just disappears. Boop. Seamless. Whap! No wonder he wants to bite our hand. We, we literally made his nose disappear. We deleted it. We deleted it. Boom! You are no longer in existence. Done. That is going to be such a traumatic moment when you do that in the game. Mm -hmm. So traumatic. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> ah! 
Pointy finger scare! Ooh, that's weird. That's a, that's a weird glitch. Like, why here? Why show us this? This feels odd to me. Like, everything else has a cohesive moment, but this feels out of place in the trailer because everything else has shown us something. And then we glitch out of this. Why? Unless it's just like a part left in by something else. That's weird. Out of it, that's weird. Yeah. And then and then the trailer just continues as usual. That's an odd bit. Got Roxine Glamrock Chica back there, so that's cool. Oh, there's our pickle popcorn. Ooh! Ooh, I didn't see that one earlier. That's horrific. So again, we, you have this repeated theme of, of things just coming at us. And us trying to do, like, normal operation. Like, this feels a bit like operation. <laughs> oh, terrifying. Freddy coming at us again. Music man. Make, this is the make your paper plate person. And we... Was that us blinking? Huh. So we do have a blink ability here or something that comes with that out. There's Ballora again, doing, doing her, doing her turns, man, doing her pirouettes. Good for you, girl. You get that. And then using that. Now accepting applications. Classic Command Six. I gotta say. In a franchise that's been pretty non-explicit about how you die, outside of like, oh, you get shoved into the suits and whatever, like, you're like, okay, that's, that's vague. Th this idea right here of, hey, here's a giant, claw, sharp, pointed claw jaw, that's, that, that looks painful. That's, that's like a saw trap right yeah. there. I see that and I'm like, ooh, that is a saw trap. December, it's coming out soon. I'm very excited. There it is. Concealing problems within problems. Huh. What do people think? White Tiger. Uh, White Tiger 87. <gasps> that is the mimic right there. White Tiger 87. AI program says this game looks insane. There must be so much variety with the minigames. And seeing the security breach characters in VR will be fun. Yeah, you would say that. You weird mimic AI program that's here. Wow. This looks absolutely, it does look amazing. Um... I would love to apply for this job. Yeah, would you, Luigi kid? Would you apply to this job? See, this is why we can't have nice things. We're, we're doing our best to try and protect you. I am out here preaching the lore to you so you don't have that reaction. Hey, when a sketchy pizzeria with like a history of, of murder comes into town and offers you a job, you say no. You say, no thanks, hard pass, get out of here. But anyway, anyway. I'm also interested in the fact that there seems like there's a lot hidden. You can tell that there's a lot that they didn't show. You saw about, like, what, a grand total of six, seven, maybe eight different minigames in here. You, there's, there's a lot under the surface I think we're going to see. Just like we're going to see with Moon, original short film by Illumination Entertainment. Let's go, gentle minions. Where are my, where are my boys at? Who's, who's hyped about Moon? <laughs> <laughs> More Minions content. Let's go. On one hand, I, I know at the beginning of this video, I'm like, ooh, maybe this is showing us some sort of like timeline of events or some sort of connection there. Uh, looking at it, though, it does seem to be following the pattern of, of Help Wanted, first kind of batch of mini of, of FNAF games. This one is kind of like the, the more recent ones in the back half of the, of the franchise. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure if it's too early to call like, oh, this is going to show us that FNAF 4 and Sister Location are connected and this and that. It wouldn't surprise me for them to confirm that with this sort of game because it seems like the books and things like that have been really leaning into that world. Um, and I hope that they do give some clarity on Sister Location and FNAF 4 and how they're related. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of remains to be seen. Uh, I do like Black Knight Angel 259 who says, can't wait for Matt Pat to turn this into a one-hour video. Also can't wait for the game, of course, but really the one-hour video. How are we doing on that time, by the way? Are we at an hour, Ash? No, um, we're like 10-ish minutes under. That is unacceptable. Right? I'm disappointed in us. Me too, man. I could throw for the content, but I don't really want to. Yeah. That, I, that feels disingenuous. 
It does. And I feel like I feel like we got what we needed to out of this experience. Right. You've, been, you've combined the intensity and grittiness of Hope Wanted with the scale and character of Security Breach. I'm going to be replaying this a ton, says Nancy Ray. There you go. I'm excited. Again, like, this is going to be a really good one. Um, it's also going to be exciting for Ash because it's Ash's first VR game that we're going to be playing on GT Not Live. Whoop, whoop. So get hyped for that one. Whoop, whoop. It is fraught with all sorts of challenges. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2. Are you going to... Are you first off? Are you excited about it? I would assume the answer is yes. Secondly, are you gonna play it? P I, I think the only thing that sold PSVR was Help Wanted, and guess what? You're getting me to buy another one of your devices for Help Wanted too. You win this round, Sony VR. You win this round. Not exactly sure where we're gonna set it up. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, we have we simultaneously have more room than ever up here. And less room than and ever. And also less room than ever. It's gonna be it's gonna be janktacular. It's gonna it's not gonna look pretty. We're gonna film this VR game. It's not gonna look pretty. I'll try my darndest though. You, you will try your darndest. Yeah. And I believe in you. Thank so, you. So anyway, let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Do you have any initial theories? Are you excited? I know I am. And as always, my friends, thank you for joining me on the couch. Ash, thank you for joining me. Of course. Hopefully, uh, you don't run away to Montana <laughs> after this game releases. But I guess we're gonna find out. I hope not. I'd love to do some more GT lives. Yeah, it is. It, it remote work is hard. For this for this gig it is a little difficult be tough. so uh, hopefully ash gets to stay with us but we're gonna find out later in december i suppose so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and as always remember it wasn't a live stream but it was a video a video for you violence <laughs> do you like that you like the violence that was great yeah. <laughs> why <laughs> like do you say it in a mild way to be like mild, mild violence. violence yeah mild violence Great. That was, that was mild, I'm staring at mild violence on screen right now. <laughs> Unhinged. Absolute unhingement. Hinges, be gone. No more. <laughs> Mommy, wow. No more hinges. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Bye.